Um, this is where we get to case-to-case -case basis. So we can move from a general issue uh, in, in triathlon and multi-sport. And I've actually been contacted and contracted by a few people to write specific articles on that. I've actually been published in Triathlon and Multi-Sport Australia doing specific stuff on training and heat. Um, also training triathlon and recovery uh, and training in triathlon and hydration. So a lot of specific scenarios I've actually researched I have that knowledge on board. Um, but where things really start to excel is where we actually use your body, your nutrition, your training pattern, and we get things to, to be individual for you. Through um, us, and I don't want this to sound like a spruit, but through Ollie, it's pretty much a free service. If you've got a question that gets to that level, um, he calls me um, at the shop. I'm, I'm there usually on a weekend. I've got no real social life, so um, <laughs> as a scientist, you don't get a social life. It's just the way it is. Um, just accept it and move on. But uh, I'm usually always there, so we can get you an answer. Uh, and even if that is, I came off my bike yesterday, what the hell do I do? Um, having said that, when I came off my bike, I called Mr. Con, and he pretty much saved my life and got me in hospital. So all this talk about him sitting with chocolate fogs probably is out of place. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to wind up with just some questions from where you go. Um, and so we can see we can get some stuff for you guys. Um, and if you don't want to put them out in public, understand that public speaking and being grilled in public is pretty bad sometimes. But it's a good point to put an open forum out there. So is there anyone that would like to ask anything specific? You mentioned a number of times fish. I mean, generally. Yep. Uh, how many serves of fish would you sort of recommend? Look, going, going on dietary guidelines, we try and get free into the body a week. So we try and vary that from worthy fish to white fish, mainly because of sourcing. We don't want to go too high up the food chain. Depending on where they were sourced, we can have some levels of dietary mercury coming in. Australia is pretty good. Um, we don't have much in the way of, of dietary contamination for a lot of our fisheries that are in the Southern Ocean. New Zealand's pretty good too. Elsewhere, if you're buying imported fish or imported frozen fish, you're playing a bit of a lottery. The good thing about fish is good source of omega-3s, easy to digest and assimilate, great source of protein for that reason. The other thing um, about fish is that it's a very good source of protein as opposed to meat, milk, nuts, whatever. So it actually fits into the diet if you're trying to get around eating high, bad fat meats and still get protein requirements. So certainly from protein requirement, Three, three serves a week is a good standard to look at if you can do it. It's a bit expensive, um, but at least try and include one. What would be the best sort of fish? There's so many varieties. There are so many. That's a really great question. Um, a lot of it comes down to personal taste. What will you eat? <laughs> and that's the first thing off the bat. Um, as, as the nutritional part of bike industry tells me, don't put people in a straitjacket and tell them to eat magic sort of fish that they hate to taste of because mm. it's just not going to work. What I like to do is get a mix of, if I have two serves a week, and that's what I try to do, um, try and get one white fish, usually flathead, tiger flathead, here local, and try and get also um, ocean tuna or ocean salmon for my other serve a week. Uh, that can come as sashimi, that can come as a fillet that you just put with lemon juice and lime juice and black pepper and just poach it. Really simple, easy stuff to do. Um, so that's what I choose, but a lot of it's personal taste. Very, very good quality fish, whiting, Snapper, flathead, tuna, salmon. They're all really high nutrient based um, oils. And if you needed oily fish to get the omega 3s up, salmon, garfish, dory. All very, very good. There's a question there. Is it there or somewhere around here? Up there, there, just there. Um, I'm a celiac, so I struggle with getting carbs and with yeah. those stuff that I've been talking about. And th this is a big, a big issue. Um, celiac disease, um, for those of you who don't know, is a genetic allergy to gluten. It's a protein, globular protein, it's a soluble protein, that's found in a few grains, mainly wheat, but also rye and oat. Now, um, it must jerk you off absolutely no opinion <laughs> that people are jumping on, oh, I'm gluten free because it's trendy. It's like, I'm gluten free because my life depends on it. Um, and a lot of people are jumping on this bad brand and thinking gluten is bad. Um, for you it is very bad because uh, it causes quite serious problems. 
Uh, I can actually include in final status cancer and death. So uh, yeah, we're not we're not kidding about how serious this is anymore. With celiac disease, we want to get a source of carbohydrates that are actually worthwhile at decent amounts of lignans, a uh, decent amount of lignin training um, and fibre in them. And so what I tend to recommend for these people who are having carbohydrate insufficiency issues with celiac disease is look to things such as uh, heirloom grains such as quinoa, amaranth, are uh, very, very good. But wheat, although it has the word wheat in it, it's not a real wheat, and so it actually is gluten. Uh, and so buckwheat is also called kasha um, by some people, is fairly good. Cool. You do need to stay away from most mueslis. Rice is a very common source, but it's very, very high glycemic index unless you get brown fibrous rice. So you might want to blend your grains. I tend to find that amaranth and quinoa are amongst the very, very best. They also have a high protein containing grains, and they also have very, very good omega-3 uh, counts for a grain. So that, that would be my choice. In terms of supplementation, you're absolutely right. You have to make sure that the gels in the capsule is not wheat based. Uh, so you have to be absolutely strict on your label. Really. And the doctors recommend to stay on the supplementation of certain things like vitamin D and iron and all that, right? Uh, yeah, I'm afraid with vitamin D, I have to agree. Um, a lot of our vitamin D comes from sunlight, but some dietary words are coming from grains. Uh, because of the pounding you put on your body, bone weight, and because you're late as well, vitamin D, probably anywhere from 500 to 1,000 a day, will be pretty much a critical supplementation marker to prevent deficiency. Because of the workload that you put on your bones, I don't want to predispose you to um, jelly fracture or jelly bean syndrome, so add a fracture on, on the feet, or for that matter, premature osteoporosis. Okay. <laughs> and that, that's a big okay. problem. Sorry. So, yeah. So, you lose your mind. Don't worry, I'm not smashing my elbow, so we can compare to what's going on. It's all cool. Um, but, yeah, that, that's sort of something I, I don't think so much. It's not as critical uh, in that sort of phase of things. Um, you can do it with something simple like iron sulfate, like constipation or things like that. These are things you can talk about with your doctor. You can go right up to the iron injections. So just make sure you have someone that knows what they're doing to it. Yeah. Otherwise, it can lead a Staying on you for the rest of your life. <coughs> so, not a good, not a good look. Um, but yeah, but there are things. But yeah, if you want to have a chat about that later, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Was there anything yeah, there? I'm a mainly vegetarian. I like doing a lot of fish. It has salmon, fresh salmon, three times a week. Awesome. Um, but it's been a long time since I've been on a diet and eat. Like, the only you should be taking this supplement is this and this. Is that true? No. No. We've got, <laughs> Piscitarianism, um, which is a vegetarian that eats fish, is actually a pretty balanced diet. We don't see a lot of king iron in this diet, so we might need, uh, especially for a pregnant or for lady, to supplement iron. Um, mainly because you're also looking at high energy turnover, high hemoglobin turnover. So if you chose this diet, I'd say once in 12 months of the blood series, just to hemocrit, hemoglobin, just, just to be absolutely safe. And that's a smart thing anyway. Um, but I'd probably look at your overall recovery markers, um, measures of muscle density. Um, again, the doctor can do this for you, your can do this, anyone that can do muscle testing can do this. It's not in a solid muscle testing. I'm talking about dead cell or uh, um, in people's skin. Just actually just check it for muscle plate density. And I can see if there's a problem. Um, if there is a protein deficiency, well, we can work around that. Um, but usually, for most people, that bottom might take a kilo on less. As long as you're getting three good serves of fish with the oils and things like that coming in, you should need to supplement unless you're in injury states or in, your, in a heavy recovery phase, so you can really smash the training. Well, you might free to keep on going or if you need your Um. It's not there. I'm also excited. You might free to go and we can. One more question, one more question one more then. Question. Yeah. Anyone else got one? Okay, that's good. Yeah. Um, uh, I can answer that in two words. Yeah. Shit, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is not invited on the Genesis products. They are very, very good. Uh, it is invited on um, not allowing the all junctions to select it. Uh, and so I find it very, very serious in our industry um, without going to uh, lecture mode on you. Um,
you know, what you have the last week. Bring in your diet and they say, this is a supplement that does this that I'm not in your diet. So, well, <coughs> try doing that. So, what you're saying is, I don't need to do it. If you can put them in a position where you can catch them out, you can really improve their result. Um, it's, it's a matter of working out what's good for There's alternatives to everything. Fresh foods, whether it be different brands of supplements. Um, you know, as I said, it's not an indictment of energy. I find most of their products to be absolutely huge uh, and, and high quality. Um, it's just, do you personally need them? And that's the one that they can be So if you are spending your money on things you don't need, it's time to save that money and put it back into better food. Or a <laughs> Yeah, you do. Uh, no, no, I smashed up my bike. Uh, Tom, will, Tom will remember uh, that he picked me up off the uh, road uh, on Yarra Avenue, all mangled, and my bike came up too. I was lucky enough to be uh, given a lovely 4,000 top bike by a, a benefactor, so uh, thank you uh, very much then. But yeah, the importance of all of your training apparatus, whether it be bike, good clothes, good diet, good food is all equally important. So don't overspend one to sort of have a flashy armor. <laughs> having said that, thank you very, very much for inviting me and giving me a chance to, to have a yarn to you all. Uh, I'll be around later, so if you do have specific questions, feel free to mob me. Thank you.